Hello and welcome. I'm Patrick Curtis, your host and chief monkey, and this is the Wall Street Oasis podcast. Join me as I talk to some of the community's most successful and inspirational members to gain valuable insight into different career paths and life in general. Let's get to it. In this episode, member Kindred.Soul shares his journey from a walk-on at his undergrad D1 football program all the way to the NFL. Learn why he left professional football after only three years, why it was at the worst possible time, how he broke into investment banking, and the struggles he's had to overcome at his bulge bracket bank to get promoted. Enjoy. All right, kindred.soul, thank you so much for joining the Wall Street Oasis podcast. No problem. Thanks for having me. So it'd be great if you could just give the listeners a quick summary of your background. You can be as vague as you want, so um, keep your anonymity. Yeah, so uh, originally from uh, the Midwest, came out to the West Coast to do my undergrad. Um, uh, and as we mentioned, uh, played played football, uh, bounced around the NFL for, for a little bit, and then uh, it was it, the Great Recession fell upon us and I was happened to be transitioning um, from the NFL trying to figure out what was next and uh, obviously not a very good time to be trying to to make a career change uh, especially without the background um, but I had an interest in finance and fortunately uh, I had some some uh, alumni uh, folks that were in my network that uh, were in the financial services industry and they got the chance to pick their brain a little bit about um, some of the things that they were doing, some of the interests that I had, some of the, the deals that were kind of coming my way. Um, and, you know, that, as, I, as we had that conversation with them, the, <clears throat> the fact that I was interested in, in financial services, private equity or venture capital, kind of however you want to think about it, mm-hmm. um, their advice to me, given the, the time, uh, and what was going on in the country and the economy broadly. And my lack of experience was to take this time and, and go back to, to school, get an MBA, focus in finance, and then uh, take a shot at, at investment banking. If you liked it, uh, the way that we kind of talked it out was, if you like it, you'll, you'll, you'll have uh, a skill set and will be teed up for a journey that can take you any number of, of places uh, within the financial services industry. If you don't, you have a skill set that uh, is well regarded uh, across industry and working in large teams, leadership, high pressure situations, and the like. And so, for sure, uh, that, that's a little bit kind of my snapshot. Cool, man. Um, so, can we go back to just college and what that was like? Uh, you, when you kind of were coming into school, did you have visions of, hey, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna make it to the league, I'm gonna make it to the NFL, or did you? Was it something where like I'm just gonna work my ass off and try as hard as I can to to make an impact, or was that like a, a dream of yours, or was that something that you had kind of focused on? It was a, it was definitely a dream. Uh, it was something that I that you know, I believed in my core, uh, but I was I was actually a walk on. Um, to the football team. So I didn't have a scholarship when I first started. Um, I just grew up in an environment that forced you to compete and I was willing to go compete. And so um, I got, when I got on the campus, uh, found out who was the best guy at my position and I <laughs> stayed in his shadow uh, as much as I could. Um, as, a, as a true freshman, he was a, an older guy, senior uh, well regarded and, and on well on his way to the NFL uh, and All American, I think his senior year. Um, and uh, you know my my approach was to just compete with him at every turn. Uh, obviously, I'm not not the same player, not the same build, not the same characteristics or attributes as it relates to speed, strength, quickness. But I you know I saw a lot of myself in him and knew that I could compete and do some things probably that he couldn't um tell me about like was he, was he open to helping you or did he see you as competition and just wanted to kick your ass every day at practice <laughs> <laughs> i think i think initially he probably he probably uh you know just wanted to help um as we as the year progressed on i think he realized that uh 
if if he had more time on campus, it probably been a, a more contentious competition. Yeah, yeah. But uh, given he he only had that last season, he knew I wasn't coming for his spot. So um, why do you think he you was, he was definitely why do you great, th- great research? Why do you think you were just a walk on? If you, I mean, the fact that you had such a successful college career um, in football, how do you think you were able to even be a walk on? Why weren't you recruited? Uh, so, you know, it was, it was a, a number of things and it, you know, the, the recruiting cycle and, uh, and everything, but especially back then wasn't as, uh, robust as it is now. Mm-hmm. Um, the, 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 uh, the team actually, and, in, in, in the year that I came out of, um, the year that I came out of high school, we only had, uh, a, a handful of scholars. I think it was 13 scholarships. Most teams are anywhere between 15 and 20 on, a, on an annualized basis. And uh, that year they were just down in numbers. Um, I had some scholarships to some other schools. Got it. Um, but I didn't, I didn't, they weren't at the same uh, conference level or, or division, division one level. And yep. I wanted to, I wanted to play at that level. Um, so I, I took the calculated risk. It was, not an easy decision uh, to pass on a free education and and uh, so so try, what try to take the risk, but. so like you were a walk on you didn't have a scholarship so it wasn't a free education but you thought hey if I if I work really hard and become really good then they they actually can give you a scholarship later down the road is that or down the line is that how it works yeah that was kind of how I was thinking I, wow you know, I, I, I that's betting I on yourself man <laughs> that's better than betting on yourself yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right. Uh, I knew I could play. I I, uh, I grew up in an environment where there was a lot of guys who had, had gone on and played uh, both college and professionally, and you know I compete with them um, yep. as I grew up. So I was confident that I could play at that level, uh, and I knew I was willing to work hard to do to to, to get a chance. And tell me a little bit. Yeah. Make, Tell me a little bit about that. Tell me a little bit about like balancing schoolwork with the, all the practices and is it like realistic? And I know a lot of the, the student athletes don't do as well academically. Did you struggle with that because you were just, it's such a huge commitment? It is. I mean, it's definitely tough. Uh, there's only, there's only 24 hours in the day. Right. Uh, and a good chunk of, of your day is, is, uh, over in the athletic facilities. Um, but you know, you know, with any, within any level of greatness comes great sacrifice. Um, and you know, if you wanted, you wanted to, to to put yourself in the best position, and then, you know, part of the draw to the school was was academics and athletics. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, thinking about who I wanted to be and where I wanted to go it was, you know, you got to work hard at at, at any, anything that you want to be successful at. So, um, as an intellectually curious person uh you're gonna have to work hard in the classroom especially when you're s- surrounded by students who are who are thinking about the, the coursework and the studies okay. much more um of the, the day than you are uh you just got to compete and that, so, i was f- fortunate that i grew up in that kind of environment so you're intellectually curious you're actually you know studying you're doing well in classes you're doing well on the football field did you have a backup like were you like nfl or bust or did you were you saying hey i better do well in school just in case I don't get drafted or whatever happened. Maybe I get injured. Were you actively looking at finance careers back in school? Were you networking? What were you doing back then? Or was it just all like really focused um, on trying to make it to the league? It, it was, it was very focused, but the school did a good job of surrounding us with resources uh, and letting us know that, you know, as our goals and the focal points changed throughout our lives that we had, resources that were around us that could help us try to make sense of things and you know i, I did a, an internship mm-hmm. uh in my sophomore summer um and fi- a, was it finance yeah. venture capital firm okay cool um and it you know the stuff that, that they had me doing was pretty rudimentary as a sophomore but <laughs> uh it was good exposure to kind of the financial services space private capital uh asset managers uh, in particular, um, kind of, kind of wet my appetite a little bit as it relates to the venture capital and private equity. And, and the, you know, this is the early 2000s. So you're, you're hearing all of these wildly successful stories. Um, so I knew that was a, a an area that was of interest to me. Yeah. You, you um, were, at, you were in school. I didn't school. get a chance to spend a lot of time in it. 
Yeah, you were in school at a really interesting time because it was right when kind of the the tech bubble burst, and then you know yeah. <laughs> you come out. Yeah, so it's <laughs> it's pretty interesting. Um, so tell me a little yeah. bit about. So you you were getting a little bit of exposure. You had a sophomore internship. What about junior internship? Or at that point, you were like really excelling on the team. You felt like, hey, I have a really good shot. Or, or was there an other another internship yeah. junior year? That 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 uh, that that summer we kind of we had we had a change in our coaching staff, and I was trying to move back to the defensive side of the ball. And, uh, there was a lot of focus on making sure that the team was together throughout the summer and so i didn't take a take a summer internship that year Mm -hmm. um and we just we just trained all summer together um with the with the change in coaching staff it was incumbent upon us as kind of the guys who were still around to try to ensure that we held together and stuck by us by each other as a as a squad so it was more intense uh, you felt like with the new staff yeah. It was more intense. It was a, it was a, it was a unique summer, that's for sure. <laughs> Two a days or three a days in the gym or <laughs> something. We, um, yeah, we definitely. I mean, we were have, we would have month, month, morning uh, conditioning sessions, afternoon workouts, and then follow that up with seven on seven and one on one type drills for the DBs and the, the offensive linemen and stuff like that. And we were you know really trying to trying to put put uh, put our best foot forward to this new staff. That's great. So it sounds like you had success. So what, tell me a little bit about just graduating and what's it like de- declaring for even being, I don't even know what that process would look like. You, you declare for the draft or how does it after your senior season or during your Caesar senior season, what's the timing of all that? And like, what if, yeah. what if you don't get drafted or was there some indication had teams been like reaching out and saying, Hey, we like, we like you. Like was how much, how, I guess the question is how sure were you? that by the time you know where you had to make that decision of hey i should start looking for a job how much time did you have between yeah. like graduating and actually um knowing yeah so that's a, that's a good question so after my senior season uh the last game was late november mm-hmm. um i had been uh selected to play in the in a, an all-star game mm-hmm. and at that, that's kind of like a, a mini NFL combine. So the, the NFL teams come in and coach. They send a, 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 a coaching staff from one of the 32 teams uh, to coach each of the, the squads in the All Star game. Yeah. And then the rest of the scouting um, universe comes and descends upon the area where you're where you're practicing and where that game is going to be held. So I had a pretty good sense that I was going to get a chance to play in the NFL. Mm-hmm. I didn't know where I was going to go, whether I was going to be drafted um, or any of that stuff. So I, I went back home to uh, the Midwest and started training for the, for the all-star game, played in the all-star game, had a great experience. Um, did you do well in that game? Went, I did. Yeah. No, I played, I played well. I was yep. probably, probably second or third leading tackler in the game and, you know, had a good, had a good week. Uh, I think you know she really showcased my uh, my athletic ability and yep. um, you know how quickly I could pick up different defenses and things like that. Uh, I was never the biggest or the strongest mm-hmm. um, guy, so it was it was always incumbent upon me to be in the right spot. So, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> Not it's it's um, kind of tough to be the biggest or strongest guy in the NFL nowadays, right? <laughs> <laughs> Guys are beasts. Exactly. Um, anyway, so. Uh, so you're so okay. working back back home working out and, yep. uh you know to go to the nfl combine in february and uh then there's some more workouts that you have through february through uh march and april and the drafts at the at the end of april and uh was fortunate to hear to fortunate enough to hear my name call do you feel like the combine hurt your stock since you weren't the most athletic uh you, you know it's funny it probably did i actually pulled my hamstring to the a week before oh, gosh. the combine, so I didn't run the forty. I I only could do limited drills, um, so it probably did hurt my stock a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so you're you're going through this, and then draft day comes. Uh, I guess what was it like? Third day, fourth day? What was the? <laughs> was it? I guess. Yeah. What? How does it work? Is it three? It's three days or so, right? It or? was and back then. It was just two days. Two so days. It was okay. First three, and then the next the next four on the second day got it and i kind of knew i wasn't going to be a first day guy right um i didn't watch the first round i didn't watch the second round mm-hmm. um i kind of you know been pegged in that third through six type type yep. uh type time frame so yep. 
I didn't even want to put myself through that agony, so I just went went bowling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the second day, second day came around, and that's a, you know that's a, a bit more nerve wracking because you're, you're you know you're, you're looking at the clock and you're waiting for your phone to ring and yep. you're checking in with people and you're watching who's getting drafted and it's nerve wracking and it was it was miserable. And you're <laughs> you like, I mean? like, and you're like, hey, that guy, I'm better than that guy. Some guy gets drafted, you're like, I'm yeah. better than that guy, <laughs> right? Um, yep. That's yep. funny. So, so you, you get a call eventually and it's exciting. You don't have to say what team or anything like that, but so you, you know, you're in, you're officially in the league, right? Um, tell me yep. a little bit about just the process of, and we'll get, we'll get to the other stuff later. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to get off football soon. Um, but just tell me a little bit about just the whole transition from school to you being an actual professional and, you know, may really it being your full-time job. Was it, was it kind of what you expected? Was it more grueling? Um, the competition level obviously is just a huge jump. Tell me a little yeah. bit about um, how you felt. Like, were you were you starting on the practice squad? How how long did it take you to, to get off? The, or did you stay on the practice squad? Or did, were you able to kind of make the jump ever into the games? I think yeah. you, I think you were, but um, it'd be great to yeah. hear a little about and that. So, so you know, I got drafted. Uh, the first uh, training camp was was eye opening. Mm-hmm. Um, you know you're you're on the you're on the, the practice field now with with guys you've uh, idolized as a kid growing up watching playing football mm-hmm. uh, guys that you've known and seen playing on Sundays uh, so it was it was you know it was kind of it was kind of funny to, to the, I remember the first day and kind of get goosebumps as I walk in the locker room and you see the helmet logo and you're like wow yeah here we are <laughs> it's like I um, I'm here. Yeah, that's uh, so cool. The, you know, the the, the jump in, in terms of of talent is is noticeable, and um, you know, you remember those kind of first couple of plays where you're out there and, and you think you know what you're you're supposed to be doing, and you, the ball is snapped and everybody's flying and you're moving, but you're not doing the things that you think you're you're supposed to be doing. So um, it's kind of a it's kind of a little bit of a rude awakening. And, is it just feel like I assume it's just faster. I, I, yeah. I assume yeah. it's just faster. Yeah. And then the guys are just so much, it's almost like you have to know, you have to be sharper, faster in even better positioning. Yeah. Plus now, especially for you not being the biggest or strongest guy you have to, or fastest, you have to kind of even rely on that more, but also try to close that gap athletically. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And those, those inches are, are what separates, uh, right. The good from, the, you know, the good from the great. Yeah. Uh, and you see that that becomes more and more apparent that that split second decision or that twitch uh, or that false step is is really impactful. And tell me about you, tell me about really your com- to- tell me about your confidence yeah. level. Like when you first those first few practices, were you like, oh shit, I'm there's no way, or were you like, I can I can get there, or like, did you always no, have you, that you confidence? Know, it's always like, well, at least for me, it was always uh, uh, you got to stay positive. You, if you start thinking that you can't do it, you won't be able to do it. Mm-hmm. That'll just it'll just spiral on itself and it'll it'll devolve and you'll you'll be out of you'll be out the door here pretty quick. So yeah, um, you know, stay positive, take the coaching, and and try to be critical of yourself and and uh, figure out the things that you can do better on any any given play, any given day, any given practice game or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was the mentality, and you know you start to find those little those little victories, and and then they become. Uh, bigger and bigger accomplishments and then you're making plays and uh, getting sacks and forcing fumbles and stuff like that and you're you're rocking and rolling nice man so how long did it take you to kind of get on the uh, game day roster so i it took me a little while Mm -hmm. Uh, i got i got cut from the team i was drafted uh by Mm -hmm. even though i was um the third or the fourth highest scoring defender that we had. We had this point system on our defense. Yeah. Um, why do you think? Why do you think that I was? Picked up on somebody. Say it again. Why do you think you were cut if you were doing so well? Just. Uh, I I was I think I was focused on the wrong the wrong things. Uh, mm-hmm. As a as a late round draft pick uh, and a rookie, I was trying to to shine on defense and show that I could be the starter on, on defense and they had picked a, a linebacker before me. Uh, they had two pro bowl guys who instead of what showing special roster. teams instead of focusing on special teams. Yeah. I did not focus on special teams in the way I should have. Yeah. Got it. 
kind of that was that was the issue. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. Okay. <laughs> See, yeah, you're like you're thinking I can get I can be the starter here and head of that guy that yeah. was drafted me. Yeah. Um. So okay, but you get picked back up, and so you, you're jumping around to a bunch of teams in the what the how long overall you were there for four years in in the league. Is that right? Yeah. It's, uh, three 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 years. Three years. Okay, so you're you jump around a few teams. You know, you you you're kind of is, is it jumping between practice squads and game day rosters? Kind of most most of your time in the league. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. It was some weeks you're you're on the practice squad. Other weeks somebody gets hurt, you get bumped up. Yep. Uh, and then you know you're just it was literally kind of that true journeyman's career, living out of a duffel bag in the hotel, extended stays. Um, cause I got an apartment after I got drafted and then I got cut and I was like, well, we don't want to do this again. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about just that life in terms of like, you know, when did you decide to say, Hey, that's enough. I'm going to start, you know, maybe I'll go back to school. When did you, when did that start kind of creeping into your head? Was it like after the th- third time you were cut or second time? Like when did, when did some of those things of like, Hey, maybe I should start looking elsewhere. When, when did that happen? Yeah, so the the, the 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 last team that I was with asked me to sign an injury waiver, basically that said uh, because you have these this bad back, you have bulging disc in your back. If you get hurt from the waist down, we're not going to pay you anything, and we're not going to we're not going to uh, cover your medical or nothing like that. And I was like, that is a ridiculous deal. Yeah, and I can't I can't I can't in good faith sign that. Right. So I did. And that was that was the moment where it was like, well, now you got to figure out what you want to do next because this is this is you, you, we're not doing that anymore. Yeah, you're not going to risk yeah. your you know your your ability to no, just be I mean, mobile it, and stuff. I mean, it's people tear their ACLs and pull hamstrings and do I mean Achilles, all kinds of injuries. Yeah. Right? And they're saying that they're that my my pre uh, pre uh, pre exposed condition pre existing condition was was going to. Um, caused me to not be supported and if I got hurt while I was playing this game. Yeah, screw that, man. Screw that. (laughs) Not worth it, man. (laughs) Not worth it. I don't blame you. So, okay, so when when you kind of were presented with that, what went through your head? What was your like? Okay, were you angry? Were you like, okay, now I just I, I got to figure out what I'm doing and like, where did you where did you turn yeah. where did you turn, man? Because it's like that's kind of would be a scary thing. Like you haven't made a ton of money, right? You made some money, yep. I assume, but oh, you haven't made like make you're not making you know you, you weren't bringing in millions. You're probably bringing a couple hundred thou, right, or something like that. But yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, it was it was really scary. I mean, it was it was what do we do? What are we doing now? And I knew you know. I was the smart guy, and I'm, you know, I like to think I'm a personable uh, individual, and that somebody will will help, and uh, there'll be an opportunity for me. But it was it was scary. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I, I hadn't really formalized any of those thoughts around what was gonna what I was gonna do next. But the good thing uh, was that my father uh, had always been talking to me about the fact that the likelihood that I make enough money in the NFL to never work again is very, 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 very low. Right. And so uh, I always had the, the understanding that I was going to have to do something after the game. And so I didn't have that kind of, um, you know, breakdown where mm-hmm. I, this was the only thing that I knew. And this is the only thing that I wanted to do. It was okay. Well, this chapter is closing. Um, what are, what are some of the other things that you're interested in doing? And if, if you can find some people that, are doing those things treated exactly the same as you did when you showed up on, on campus as a freshman and try to do the things that they're doing, see, see how they're thinking about the problems that they're looking at and, and compete in that same way. Um, Mm -hmm. So fortunately enough for me, there was some resources in our alumni network that uh, as I started to, to, to have conversations and describe some of the things that I was interested in and um, you know, given the NFL, and the the public perception that everybody in the NFL is rich, uh, especially at the time, um, there was a lot of people that were bringing different investment opportunities my way. And I, you're I like, man, I can't, I, I can't, I can't invest. Yeah, <laughs> like I can't invest. I need that to I, live. <laughs> I need that. I one. needed to live. One, I, yeah. I, two, I don't. I, I wasn't savvy enough, and I knew I wasn't savvy enough to to think that I could determine whether or not this is something that I should be throwing my money at, which is right. where a lot of these NFL guys. Uh, lose their shirt you know, yeah 
Yeah. I don't remember the stat. I don't know about NFL, but I know NBA, I think something crazy high percentage of the players go bankrupt within like five years. Yeah. And and the yeah, NBA absolutely. guys make a lot more than the NFL guys. Um, they do. So, um, they do. but so, okay. Tell me a little bit about, so you're, you're kind of making that transition. Did you move back? Like, where did you go? Did you go back home? Did you to like kind of regroup or did you immediately come back yeah. towards school or what did you do? I know I moved, I moved to, I moved to Los Angeles, mm-hmm. um, hung out by the beach for a little bit. Nice. Uh, lived down in the, in the Venice beach area. Um, my, uh, my relationship at the time was, was based there and, um, you know, I was just trying to, trying to figure things out. And fortunately for me, that the, some, some of those network folks, uh, the alumni network, that I tapped into was, was based there as well. And so I had the chance to, to kind of really pick their brains and sit down with them on multiple occasions, to try to kind of map out what, what, uh, so you what literally, like. you literally stopped, um, playing in the NFL, probably at the worst possible time in like the last 40 <laughs> years. Um, so, <laughs> so you, you stopped right before the financial crisis, financial crisis hits. You're talking to all these finance guys. They're like, sorry, man, it's bad out there. Right. So, yeah, so, so yes, yeah, well, I don't even know if they were like, I don't even know if I could hire you if you had a skill set, which you don't at this point. <laughs> right. It was that bad. So tell me a little bit about that time period between, you know, when you stopped to when you, uh, it looks like you got your MBA, you started, and got your MBA. Tell me about that and what kind of prompted yeah. you to go back to school and what was going on. Well, I mean, it was it was tough, right? I mean, you, it was, nobody was hiring. This was two thousand eight, two thousand nine time frame. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you you've got a, a degree from a good school, uh, but you don't have any work experience outside of playing professional football, mm-hmm. which is nice to talk about, but yeah, you know, in the context of a corporation, is not really um, doing a ton, especially as they're all trying to determine where where the bottom is, and uh, you know how they can cut expenses yeah and so you know i tried to i tried everything i tried to get a job as a, as a trash collector i tried to get a job as the fedex delivery guy i was either overqualified from my degree and like why why would you want to do this job or i was under wildly underqualified um and would need and needed needed uh some experience yeah so, you were just trying to get any job uh, at that point because it had been a yeah. while since you stopped you're like i need a paycheck right so exactly. i can imagine it's exactly. super stressful you're down in la for a while then and like you're just applying to anything and everything because it's just a horrible time yep. so okay yep. so then eventually did somebody just tell you hey just go get an mba or did that come to you what 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 prompted that move yeah that, that kind of came out of the conversations and and with the with the, the folks in financial services from the alumni network was look if this is something that you're interested in longer term if you go back to school get an MBA focus in finance um, you'll have this this can put you on the the, the right path mm-hmm. and this is a great time to do it since nobody's really hiring and you'll come out and this will be a better economic environment mm-hmm. there'll be some opportunities um, and you can you can go tell your story and, it, and it'll make a lot of sense. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about the, the MBA program. Was it, was it a good experience for you? Was it hard? Was the, were the classes hard? Was it something where like the recruiting was easy networking? Tell me a little bit about like the on-campus recruiting. Did you start right away? Did you know banking was the one, what you wanted to do or was it, uh, yeah. were you looking at everything? So I was fortunate that I was fortunate that I, you know, given those conversations with some people who I viewed as um, very well respected in their industry. Yep. Um, I knew what I was going to do. I knew I was going to go in. I knew I was going to focus on finance. I knew I was going to go into investment banking. And so that was the sole focus from day one. Um, Great. And you juxtapose uh, going back and getting a grad degree and the undergrad uh, experience where you're, you're, you're balancing football and academics it was incredibly manageable for me because, mm-hmm. you know, you don't have to go spend six hours or whatever, uh, at the athletic facility, um, just training and, and not focus on classes. So right. uh, I just dove right in and, um, uh, did everything I could from a finance perspective. It took every finance class I could, um, took all kinds of trips up to, to New York city to, uh, Great. to start networking and trying to, to, to get my name around and some of these firms that I was looking at. Did that come um, naturally to you? Did, did that come naturally? Like, did you know that networking was so critical or did, did some one of your alumni tell you like, you just need to meet people? No, I think it came, came from <clears throat> conversations with folks who I'd, 
who I talked to and, and one, one piece of really good advice that I got from, uh, from, from the, the, some of the original folks who told me to go back to, to school and try to try I banking was, uh, anytime you have a conversation with somebody and, and you, you leave feeling like this, this was a, a good, um, a good interaction, ask that person to introduce you to one or two other people that could be helpful as you're thinking about, um, pursuing an opportunity with that firm. Right now, you know, that really helps, um, uh, get your cast a wide net. Yeah. It builds a um, web, right? It builds a huge web and network. Exactly. You just start getting more and more people, um, that you can exactly. meet. Exactly. And you, well, all you're trying to do is build up enough of those positive data points that as they're going through the, the, uh, the process of saying, you know, is this person somebody we want to consider or is that person somebody we want to consider? And everybody's got a, a fairly positive interaction with, with you. The more people you have, the better you're going to be. That's great. So, that t- so was the was the recruiting for like in, you knew then, you know, given your alumni guidance and you had been talking to people, you knew that kind of that first um, summer internship in the RMBA was important. So tell me a little bit about like the recruiting process there where you immediately like – it sounds like you were going up to New York, you were meeting people, but was it tough coming from the MBA you were at or was it something where like they were on campus recruiting heavily? There was, there was a, a decent amount of on-campus recruitment. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, 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 I knew that just given where I was at, what my background was that I, I wanted to, to make sure that I put my full effort into everything. And so I, they, there was a little bit of, of on-campus recruitment, but I, you know, I took it upon myself to say, look, if if if, if traveling to New York and having coffee with somebody is going to be yeah. um, the thing that gets me the job, then I'm going to go. I'm going to go do that. So awesome. So, how many times do you think you did that? How many times do you think you went up there? Uh, probably ten. That's great. First, uh, as, yeah. 10 times or so as, as, uh, through that first semester trying to, that's unbelievable. Different folks. That's unbelievable. Yeah. This is smart though. Um, okay. So you, it worked out, you got a great internship, you survived your summer associate internship, survived. which, yeah. which is, that's, that's uh, the best way to describe it too is survive. Cause I think it, I, it was, it was tough. <laughs> I think the seat that you were in, in terms of like not having banking background before, not having any finance experience before and getting thrown into a summer associate class has got to be yeah. the most difficult thing because you have analysts under you that can run circles around you and modeling because they've been doing it for two years. And then you're like trying to manage them. Right. You know what, you know what, as I, as I think about it, sitting here and thinking about it, 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 it felt a lot like going from high school to college on the football field and then college to the NFL where everything was just moving so fast and yes, you can catch some concepts because you're, you yeah. know, you're smart and you've been looking at some things, but the pace at which people were doing stuff was just insane. Well, well it, exceeding what I was, what I was capable of. And so I, you know, I didn't get the, didn't get the offer right away. Uh, in that group, they gave me an offer in like private wealth management or something like that. And I was just like, nah, I don't know if I want to do that. Yeah. So interesting. So like you, you feel like you just struggled over the summer to kind of grasp everything. Everything was moving so fast. I, I think it's almost impossible. Like, unless like I've seen other, I was an analyst and so when associates came in and they didn't have that banking background, I can tell you from an, yeah. an I can tell you from an analyst perspective, it was more frustrating to have that associate looking yeah. over you. Cause it's like, dude, just get out of the way. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, so, and luckily enough, I had enough experience in that. Right. When you step into an environment you see people are moving really fast yeah you knew i wasn't trying to just insert myself in the way like right you got to do it this way right it was more like hey analyst you're you're a rock star i and i respect that right Uh, can you help me think about like when you're doing this what like what's happening how are you thinking about it what and and really just humble yourself and say do you think that worked do you think that worked though do you feel like i mean you didn't get the offer in the group that you wanted do you feel like there was a reason for that do you feel like it just they felt like did that hurt your reputation there what what happened there do you think in that you know it it may it may have i think the firm that that i worked at just you know it's not built for uh for for a runway to get up to speed especially at that at that in that role and in that group (laughs) and uh, it was a top you know, group at, I, a, I, at a top yeah, bank, it right? A tough group. Yeah, it's a top uh, group at a top bank. So and they we'll want look. they want to drop somebody in. They want that person to be able to run. I I, I needed I needed some warm up laps before, <laughs> and, I, and I get it. And I, my senior mentor told me that, and, and he was I'm still in contact with him today. He's a great great guy. Yeah, um, he's done great things since he since he's left the firm. Um, 
but he told me he was very candid with me, especially towards towards the end of the the the, uh, the internship. Was like, look, we're we're not built to to have like you you you're doing great. We think you can be great. You have a great personality. You have a great story. You're smart. Mm-hmm. But we need to drop an associate in here that can run at a hundred miles an hour, and, right. and you're not there yet. Yep. And so that's it, fair. It, uh, that's fair. Yeah. yeah. That's fair. So did you feel like that that hurt you in the full time recruiting, not having that offer? Like, well, how did you go back to school without having that offer? Like, did you were you like, oh, well, shit, so I, that's going to hurt me. I didn't have the offer in that in that role. Oh, but like, you had another I offer. OK, yeah, yeah, I did have an, I did have an, I did leave that summer with an offer. OK, which helped a lot. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, had I not had that offer from from that firm, maybe maybe things turn out a little bit differently. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, she, yeah, was telling the story, right. And here, the story was, I went into a, to the lion's den and I was the least equipped, uh, from, from a prior experience perspective, mm-hmm. um, to compete. And I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't cut it. They gave, they gave out four offers. I was, uh, one of seven, they gave out four offers. Got it. Uh, so I wasn't the only person that didn't get the offer. Which is and good. And I did get an offer from the firm. Yeah. And I, you know, as I, and I talk to people about this, right? As I think about what I want my career to look like, if I go into private wealth management, I'm, and, and knowing that I come from the NFL and people are just going to be like, just go dial for dollars, call all your buddies in the NFL right. and say, Hey, bring me the money. Um, right. Is that going to teach me the skills that I wanted to learn? Uh, and I, you know, I, I took another risk and said, look, I can tell this story about why I didn't get this job. Right. Um, and hopefully somebody will give me the chance to let me get my foot in the door so I can go compete again. Um, and fortunately enough for me, I, I got that opportunity. And, um, so the story, had to go, the story uh, worked, the story, the story worked, um, in the recruiting yep. in, the, in the second level. So did they, did, uh, the first bank give you a lot of time to accept that offer? Or was it like an exploding, like you have to tell us soon or was it were they cool about like no, you were, yeah no so i so the way it worked was um you know finished the summer yep um and you know as you as you get there's a few days off before you go back to school and as you get back on the campus i was just i reached out to the recruiters that i had been uh uh in contact with prior to accepting the offer at the at my summer internship yep um and just kind of laid it out like here you know i'm back in the i'm back in the cycle mm-hmm. you know this is the this is the situation love to to continue the dialogue let me know how we got to get back into the pipeline of full-time recruits and if we got to do super day thing again um, cool you know let, let me know what those those things look like and and so we got back into the process and um, do you feel you like know, there were back. do you feel like there were things you could do or you did in your second year of your MBA that kind of made you more ready in when you went back in for a full time oh absolutely I Can mean I mean the, the summer the, the summer internship was was all the, the the insight I needed to to the gaps that I had, um, and so you know there was there was a lot of modeling right like I never mm-hmm. spent any material amount of time in Excel even in the, the the summer internship that I had it was very rudimentary and so yep uh, I'm sorry this is the undergrad summer internship that I had it was very kind of basic and so yeah you know, I just one. dove in like you know how can I get as much modeling experience as I can. Um, again, taking all the finance classes that I could, and I just forced myself to try to think about the problems and the, the discussions that we were having during my summer, uh, in I banking. Mm-hmm. Um, do you feel like there was a time, of, like it, did it click all of a sudden at a certain time or did, was it a gradual, like it was a steady kind of step, stepwise, small incremental improvements? You know, I think, I think once I came out of that summer, I had a good grasp of yep. where I needed to, to, to focus and, as 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 I went through that second second year, it was definitely starting to click. Got it. Cool, man. So you kind of start in you you come in as an associate at another top bank, and you're right away. Do you feel like you're drowning again? Like things are moving faster? It's a little slower, but you're still struggling. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So it was a, it was a little bit was a little bit of a uh, a repeat because it was a different group and a, and a and a product versus coverage. Got it. Um, so you're diving deep in that product. Um, and there was a lot of nuances around it that I had, hadn't had a great deal of exposure to. So again, feeling like, yeah. oh crap, I'm drowning. <laughs> How, do I, how do I stop the ship from sinking? Tell me about the, tell me about the, the hours, like it, difference of like working, you know, being in the NFL, probably training physically exhausted. Did you feel physically exhausted ever 
as an as an associate at a at a top bank, you know, in this group, or did you feel like oh the hours are just brutal because you were putting in so many long hours at the at the office, or or was it something where like you were so used to it that it was pretty easy for you? It, it it's exhausting, but it, it, I mean it's a different type of exhausting, right? Like the fatigue that you feel mm-hmm. when you're in the middle of training camp and you're two a days and it's ninety five degrees and you got all these pads on and you're losing fifteen pounds of practice. Yep. Uh, you know, that's a different fatigue than I've been up for the last 37 hours. <laughs> right. And I need, I need, I need to, I need a nap. You're like more delirious, know, right? <laughs> I, yeah. I can't see straight. I don't know if I'm, if, if, if the things that I'm seeing and, and perceiving in, in this world are actually <laughs> like real things. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's a, it's a different fatigue. Yeah. Um, but you know, you know, it, the, the perseverance and the, the, the understanding, you know, you can get through most of these things, at least for a short amount of time, you know, not, not looking to, to, to run a 36 hours. Uh, but was that self, three, was that self imposed? Was that self imposed? Were you putting that pressure on yourself because you felt like you were a little bit behind when you came in to, to work those crazy long hours? Like, were you staying extra late to try and get up to speed or, or was it something where it was just, that was the nature of the group that you were in? I think it was probably a little bit of both. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a busy time in the market. There was a lot of stuff happening, yep. uh, and as, as in, in, in the debt capital markets, you know, as rates go down, everybody gets gets excited. Yeah, um, everybody wants to buy something. Everybody wants to reprice something. So it was a ton of activity, and so that was a part of it. Uh, yeah, just the vo- sheer volume. Um, but then also, you know, I'm a competitive person, and I want to be uh, respected and, and viewed in that kind of top top quartile of, of folks as my peers and so that that also um you know makes me want to spend a little extra time right and yeah you know even if it's another 30 minutes at the end of the day trying to just review something that you think you can do better or figuring out um or even if so when i got to the point where i i really think i made the step change of once i got full time was as i started journaling stuff down like jotting notes down for myself and as opposed to you know, just the things that I needed to, to do in any particular staffing that I had. Instead of a to-do list, uh, meaning you, you started journaling what, like th- your thoughts or, or things that you were confused yeah. about? or what? I, I, I started journaling the things that I was doing good and the things that I was doing bad. Got it. Um, was I, and I, I wasn't sure where I stood and I was nervous around, you know, I, am, I, am, I, am, I, am, I cut, am I up to snuff? Am I going to get fired? What's, you know, what's the feedback going to be in, in, in versus – uh, coming from a, an environment like athletics, where you're you're reviewing film, you've got a coach that's looking at every every snap that you take, um, and you can go back and review the film. That there was no there was no mechanism for that sort of feedback for me. Right. And so I was trying to recreate that level of feedback for myself. And so as I sat down with an MD, talked about a pitch, and he's marking it up, and I got all these comments, the things that I was jotting in my journal for myself were this this guy doesn't like this or um when you're when you're presenting this make sure you're thinking about all these other things um and and that kind of uh repository for me was was incredibly helpful um uh, as i started to try to recognize the areas that i can improve on really quickly and do you, knock some do of you mind do you mind out. sharing some of those like was it like okay this guy really likes you better not misalign stuff here or like the way you phrase yeah. things here <laughs> was it like that detailed absolutely Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because every every banker is different, right? Every banker has a different preference. Some guys are incredibly detail oriented around the aesthetics of the page. Right. Some are less. Some are pretty lax and don't 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 get all hung up on that stuff. But it's all important, right? And they all feed into what the perception of you is on that on your platform. Right. So it's it's incumbent upon you to to, to take the the feedback they're giving you, either whether it's direct or indirect. Um, and that was what I was trying to, to solve for. So you were doing this kind of, uh, self review on a daily basis that helped you kind of improve But Tell me about like your first real review, like formal review with, did it, did it go well? Did it go poorly? Did you feel like, Oh shit, was it an oh shit moment or was it okay? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be okay. You know, so in the first mid year review, it was kind of an oh shit. And that was, this was bef- the mid year review was before I started journaling in yep. this way. Yep. Um, and it was very shortly after that I started to do the journaling because, you know, the feedback was, 
you know, you got to increase your attention to detail. You need to spend more time with, with, with this attribute or documentation or whatever. Yep. And, uh, you know, as 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 we moved from that mid year to my final uh, the final uh, review for the first year, you know they I, I probably dig it up, but they they literally mentioned how quickly I closed the gap after that um, after that feedback, and so they were they were raving about you know you're very coachable, you you're you're listening to what we're saying, and that's you're great, correcting the mistakes that that you that you were making previously, and you're you're creative in, in ways that some of your peers are not. So keep doing that. Maybe Man, like, it's inspirational. Like, like, you're, giving me, you're giving me goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think anyone talking about investment banking can give me goosebumps. But <laughs> no, that's great, man. That's so cool. So so you're, you're kind of turning it around. That second review is much more positive. They're like, just keep going, right? And so you eventually get, pro- yeah. you eventually get promoted because um, yeah. you're, you're doing such a good job and you've been now a VP for a while. Is this, is this something where you feel like you can make a career out of this? Is this something where you feel like, you know, you're, you're gifted at this now, you, once you, now that you have the reps? Yeah, no, I, I mean, it's definitely something I could see myself um, in a career. And um, the, the advisory function is definitely something that, that, that's very interesting. Um, you know, you get a chance to sit down with really sharp people and, and discuss, especially once you start moving up um, and get beyond analyst, associate, and VP, you're just sitting down to have conversations with sharp people about interesting problems. Yeah. Um, and I, I'll never forget the moment that, um, you know, I, I got brought to a, uh, a dinner. A, a, it was, it was kind of told to us as this is a pitch. We pulled together this deck and the, the guy was like, we're actually not pitching. We're just going to go to dinner and talk to him. I just needed that information. Um, <laughs> and so we went and sat down and, and literally the, it was the CFO of, a, of an investment grade, uh, gaming client and we literally just sat down and talked about six or seven different deals and different properties and different different challenges that he was facing and uh, that was the moment where I was like oh wow once you cut your teeth enough and you get to the point where you're building these relationships and, and you know the the space you're literally just brainstorming with these these people and yeah. then you go out and you're trying to execute on what you guys came up with that's, that's really that's, cool. That's, that's that's an interesting an interesting function. And, you know, you can make a good make a good living. You can you can learn a lot and put yourself in the position where if you get the entrepreneurial bug or you get an opportunity and you want to go step out and try something new, you're you're very well equipped to go do that. Do you feel like you'll be good in that that transition from you know associate to VP to MD is very much it kind of switches from execution a little bit more to sales. Do you feel like I think just talking to you, I think you'd be naturally very good at sales. Do you feel like you, yeah. you're going to be able to make that transition well, or do you feel like there's a little bit of a, um, how do I say, like it's a little bit of a, a, a tough transition for somebody, you know, you've been focused on execution now for, for, for what, yeah. 60 years or so. It's you hard. Know, to, I, I, think, I think, you know, at every step, one thing that I've tried to, to, to be mindful of is what are the things uh, that the, the person in the level above me are, are struggling with? Mm-hmm. Um, and a, as an associate, it was what's the thing that the VPs are stressed about? And as a VP, is what's the thing that the D or the MD is stressed about? And what are the challenges that they face in those roles? And so I've tried to start to uh, train my mind to start, you know, a- addressing some of those things. Um, you know, tra- traveling as much as they travel, and and trying to keep all the deals and all the the, the things straight in their mind as they as they go out uh, and have these conversations with these CEOs and CFOs and um, are they know, expecting you to start? Are, are they expecting you to start build those relationships? Do they do they want you to start doing that yeah. soon? No, they yeah, have. They, yeah. They've given me the opportunity to go out and start doing that. So I've got um, a couple of different uh, sectors that I've got some coverage in now, and great. Uh, in addition to to my execution uh, um, work that I'm doing, I'm out I'm out uh, trying to trying to originate stuff on my own. So it's it's fun to kind of get that opportunity. That's great, man. Um, so. I don't want to keep it too much longer. It's been re- a really fun, interesting conversation. I'd Before we call it, um, it'd be great if you could just, do you have any advice you'd give to your younger self kind of looking back, um, you know, maybe whether it's in high school, college, <laughs> when you were in the NFL, anything specifically you would have done differently or told, your, told yourself? Uh, <clears throat> I think... I think if I was to tell my younger self anything, it would be make sure you you uh, do a really good job of 
uh, networking outside of the firm that you're at. Mm. Um, and, and just to, to, to continue to take the toll of what your stock is worth, your personal stock is worth in the marketplace. And, you know, I, I, I've, I've looked at some other opportunities, um, but you know, I've never really dove full in and, and went through the full process of trying to see what other what other opportunities um, I could have uh, run down yep. if I wanted to. Yep. You know, and and in, in, in that in that light, I think um, you know I may have not, not sure changed myself because I've, I've I've had a great experience. I've got a great uh, journey and, and a great path ahead. So I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not disappointed in that regard. But if 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 I could tell my, if, if I was telling my younger self how to maximize um, going forward, that would be that would be something that I would definitely be keep top of mind is make sure you're you're at least once a week having some a coffee or uh, trying to grab a bite to eat with with some some folks in your industry from a firm that's outside of your own. Yeah, I think that's great advice. Just because you can get so kind of you can you can put your head down and for years not pick your head up only be surrounded by the people in your firm and not really get a true perspective of where you sit. And even every couple of years kind of going out, even if you're not looking to change jobs, just seeing what's out there. Because like you said, you know, you don't know where things are changed. Maybe there's a huge shortage of associates or VPs in this other place and they would, it'd be a, it'd be a really big jump for you, but it would also be a good place. So, I mean, the other thing to say yeah. is if you're in a good seat, and you're getting good mentorship, and you're you're progressing well. There's nothing wrong with sticking sticking it out with the firm and, and riding it all the way up. Absolutely. So, anyways, man, this has been a, a real fun conversation. Um, thank you so much for taking the time. And thanks to you, my listeners at Wall Street Oasis. If you have any suggestions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to send them my way, Patrick at WallStreetOasis.com. And until next time.